All right, y'all. So look, we got Big Mel Rose in the building over here at Music Heads today. What's going on, Mel Rose? Big Mel Rose in the building. What's good, y'all? Man, what's going on? I know you got um new projects that you're working on. Okay. Talk to me about this 150 streams. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's views. Okay. It's okay. views. Okay. So my video for Don't Be Charlie, that's the, it's all about Don't Be Charlie, right? It's all about Charlie, but don't be Charlie. Okay. And, uh, you know, I dropped a video like in October, but it's been all over. You know what I'm saying? I put it on Say Cheese. It went up to like, 319k you know now okay, i got it on instagram okay. you know what i'm saying it's circulating it's at over 100k views you know what i'm saying so it's like that's just off my page solely you know and so it's it's dope that you know it's picking up in other places and here you know people rocking to it here so i opened the caribbean carnival with charlie and it's just been you know moving ever since so it's it's a it's a vibe because that's the first song that I released on my own beat. You know what I'm saying? So okay. it's like, yeah. <laughs> now, usually when I interview somebody, I wait till the end before I ask for their social and all of that. But since you're talking about that song, oh, yeah. we're going to go ahead and give the people where they can find that at right now. Don't be Charlie. <laughs> where, where can they find that at? Okay. you. It's on all social media uh, platforms, right? All listening platforms you can go on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, the video's up there. You can go on my Instagram at Melrose Stacks. That's um, M-E-L, Rose like the flower, Stacks like money. Okay. And they just type in, don't be Charlie. Don't be Charlie by Melrose Stacks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so, so describe that feeling for us. Is this the first song you ever had that did those type of numbers? Uh, it is actually, you know, like I've had other songs that as far as like streaming on Spotify have been more, you know, uh, popular, you know, um, because I've been pushing that song for, you know, Bogle, I, I gave Bogle a nice run, you know, mm -hmm. and it was really hard to compete with that song because Bogle is lit. You know what I'm saying? Everybody love Bogle. You know what I'm saying? But to have something that could finally match you know what i'm saying that vibe and compete with bogle i feel like you know all songwriters or artists deal with that you know trying to get something that's you know lit like the last one right and okay. of course you're creating just from i know for me i could speak for myself you know i create just based off of creation you know like i'm not going into it like i want this type of song you know i'm going off of what i feel the beat you know um but to create my own beat, write a song to it, and it competes with something that, you know, I've been pushing for three years, it means a lot to me, especially for, you know, it to be so successful, you know. All right. So um, <clears throat> you left Atlanta for personal reasons. <laughs> you decided to come back. I was not going. I was not leaving forever. Okay. So you never intended on actually leaving. When I went to Oklahoma? Yeah. I, I was not... I knew I was going to be gone for like a month. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it I wasn't like... We relocated because it took you how long to come back? It it was it was over a month. You know, um, I was... I wasn't expecting to be, you know, over the month, you know. It was a few goddamn months. It right? was not. I was uh, bad, sure? but... I was back, but I was just kind of, you know, it was, it was a lot going on. You know, okay. I so wasn't, you wasn't performing or, pre or none of that at the time. He was getting <laughs> shit together or. I mean, when I came back, I did do a show. Okay. Honestly, you know, I, I when I came back, I was, you know, chilling. You know, I like to be in the cut, you know. I, I mean, somewhere you know put up where the pretty girls be. You know what I'm saying? Put even, up. We didn't even tell the, where you from? I'm from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. The I am from Brooklyn. Okay. Okay. But, you know, I came here from North Carolina. I went to college in North Carolina. Okay. Shout out Riley. Shout out Bull City. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, you know, I came out here during COVID and then I ended up going to Oklahoma. You know, it was just like, I was just. I was just trying to be wherever I needed to be. It was a cause that that meant something to me. It was, you know, the centennial of the 
Tulsa Massacre. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. to be at Black Wall Street and, you know, be out there promoting my my single. Well, really, I was promoting my whole project. Okay. Because I had dropped Concrete Rose, which is my EP. You could check that out on all streaming platforms, you know. And um, I was out there pushing that, but also, you know, fighting for reparations. You know what I'm saying? I was out there marching. I was out there sitting on panels. Um, You know, I worked on a documentary. I was really out there with the people. And, you know, I really... um. I had a great experience. I, I it was worth it. You know, I I really love being on me and Paul's show. You know, I really love working and being on the podcast. It meant everything to me. You know, and um, but Black Wall Street meant everything to me too. You know, so it was a hard decision to make because okay. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I really believed in the show. We were growing. You know. People were fucking with us. You know, we would go out. You know, yeah. Paul had me in the gym. You know what I'm saying? I was working out. We was working out. We was we was a team, you know? Okay. And I don't think anything other than that experience, you know, going out to Tulsa and, you know, um, I met some amazing people. You know, I, I made some amazing memories. And, you know, I'm a part of history. And that really meant something to me. And um. But it did, you know, we ain't do the show no more, you know. So I hope that we can get back to that, you know. Everything happens in God's time. And, um, you know, I appreciate Paul for real, you know what I'm saying? I really do for coming to me with the idea, you know what I'm saying? And we was really vibing, you know, right. talking about different different topics. And I feel like it was needed, you know. And nope. maybe we need to bring it back, Paul. Look, what's good? You know what I'm saying? What's good? Y'all go check it out, too. That's my man, Paul. Shout out to Paul, man. The Paul Kennebrew Show. Yeah. It's on yeah. YouTube. It's on YouTube. So okay. you can go back and see the episodes. Reach out to Paul and be like, yo, you and Melrose need to, you know what I'm saying? Get Do back something. Popping. Yeah. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Why not? It was a vibe. You know, he from Brooklyn. I'm from yeah. Brooklyn, yeah. you know. It was, it was, it was cool, you know. Okay. So how do you like it down here in Atlanta? How do I like it? Yeah. I mean, to me, it's like, I've lived all over, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I feel like Atlanta is like a blend between Brooklyn, well, New York and, you know, North Carolina. Because mm. I get the best of both worlds, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's city-like, but... It's still like country, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's some parts where you could duck off, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Low key, a little country girl, you know what I'm saying? I'm a Brooklyn Southern Belle. I like to be in the cut. I don't wanna be around all the time, you know what I'm saying? I wanna be somewhere put up. So I appreciate the quiet, even though, you know what I'm saying? I'm from Brooklyn. Yeah, sometimes I do wanna be in the mix, you know what I'm saying? But that's what people get money for, so they could get out the mix and be somewhere ducked off, you oh, know? God. So it's a lot of places, you know what I'm saying, out here, nice places that's in the cut. And, you know, I, I love the trees here. That's my favorite part of okay. Atlanta. It's the city in the forest. You know, um, it's, it's beautiful trees everywhere. You know, it's fall right now, so, you know, everything is falling. It's a different vibe, you know, but, you know, I I do love the trees. I love that it's so, you know, uh, beautiful. I ain't seen a peach yet. You know, I'll be <laughs> trying to find them in the country. And they told me, you know, somebody told me that before they used to have the, um, it used to be all types of fruits on the trees here, mm. you know, but it was causing a lot of fruit flies. Mm. So, yeah. So the resolution was, to get rid of the female trees and replace them with male trees. And the male trees produce a lot of pollen. So that's why it's a big pollen, you know, pollen issue, whatever. But yeah, I'm a nerd on the low, so. Let me ask you this. Like, as far <laughs> as the music scene go, you moved Right. Because you moved down here to do music, right? I did. You know, I came here running for president. So let me ask you this. Like, um, New York has a hell of a music scene. Okay. Why 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 uh Atlanta over New York? 
Well, it was because of where I was at. Like, I was in North Carolina before I came here. So it's not like I left, you know, it's not like I left New York and came to Atlanta. But that's what I'm saying. Like, why why you didn't just go back home? I didn't know I was coming here for that. Like, I came here on a whim. Like, it was, I decided on, like, a Thursday I was going to come out here that Saturday. You know what I'm saying? Somebody invited me to a mansion birthday party. And at the time, I was like, man, I ain't going all the way to Atlanta for no party. You know what I'm saying? For North Carolina, that's like six hours. You know what I'm saying? So, but then my posters had came. You know what I'm saying? I came out here to Atlanta with like 1,100 posters running for president. So when my posters came, I was like, yo, what am I going to do with all of these here? You know what I'm saying? And I could sell them. They looked that good. Like, I wasn't expecting them to look that good. But when I seen them, I was like, I could sell these. <laughs> so I was like, I need to take them to Atlanta. I need to go to this party. I had no idea that I was going to move here. Like, I didn't have nothing in place. I came out here. I just threw all my little fly clothes in the back of the truck. And I came out here like, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? And once I was out here networking, people was, you know, buying my posters. I was autographing them. They were showing me love, you know. And it was like, wow, you know. It was a vibe and it made me want to stay, you know, and the longer I stayed, the more I grew, you know what I'm saying? The more I was going to different places, going to different shows, then I'm acting, then I'm doing comedy, you know what I'm saying? And I'm on a reality show, you know, it's like all of these things, but it was because, you know, I was out, I was trying to get it, you know? So, yeah. So what's the plan? The plan now? Yeah, what's the end game? What's the end game? You can't tell. You can't tell that. I mean, I, listen, we we don't talk. We don't talk about that. Listen, I'm in love with the the journey. You know what I'm saying? I'm in love with the the process. As hard as it is, you know, it's like I came here. You know, you can have your days where it's like, yo, I don't know how I feel about this, but. It's just something that you you just can't leave alone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so you just keep redefining your why. And the end game is to keep going, keep getting to this money. You know what I'm saying? Growing to another level. You know, I'm always raising and rising to another potential. You know what I'm saying? To see, okay, what can I do next? How am I going to make money? I love what I do, but where the fuck is my money at? You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Speaking, speaking of that, um, so the YouTube channel, you know what I'm saying, as far as getting, you know what I'm saying, the, those type of views and you know, whatever, um, have the have the subscribers been going up as, as well? Well, it's not on YouTube. It's on Instagram. That's the thing. Well, have, you, have you been gaining more followers? Yeah, I gain a thousand followers every week. Ever since I dropped the video, it's a thousand followers. Like, it keeps going up and up. Every time I check, it's like... You know what I'm saying? It's it's up and up. So it's like it's 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 like okay, you don't know where it's gonna go, right? You just keep you just keep pushing as far as like YouTube, the numbers is going up but not like on there. You know what I'm saying? I really need to build my YouTube page more, you know, but it's definitely videos up there. I got videos up there that's not songs that's posted on my you know, Spotify. So you can find some, you know, some classic shit in the cut if you go on my YouTube. Subscribe to my page. Get my subscribers up. You know what I'm saying? Tell somebody about Melrose Stash. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nobody else like me, baby. So, you know what I'm saying? You got to get familiar. Melrose Stacks everywhere. M-E-L Rose like the flower stacks like money. Do you mind if we let people hear a little skit or something? A little scared of what? Some of your music. I mean, if you want to. Okay. So, let's do that. When somebody agrees to it. Here's a story about Charlie. He can't keep his ducks in a row. Don't be Charlie. Every time he drink one month, she start to get him for a school. Don't be Charlie. Charlie, why you disappoint yourself? You make money, you should discipline yourself. Find somebody better than your ex. They flexing out here on the road. 
Now Charlie, he got a new body. Her name is Angel. Don't be Charlie. She made Charlie so happy. He they take her wherever he goes. Don't be Charlie. Juve Mornish. I'm fucking with that. You feel me? Don't be Charlie. Yeah. And it sounds great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just a vibe. It's fun yeah. music. Okay, okay. That's what's needed. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, I feel like... That, good, that feel good music. Yeah. It's like, people just want to, you know, I make music for people with passports that want to have right. fun and travel. You know what I'm saying? It's summertime right. somewhere, everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I like to use my voice as a vessel for different things, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's for a cause, you know, standing up for our rights or, you know, speaking for, you know, people who don't have a voice, right? You know, like my song, Say Their Names, that I wrote for Sandra Bland and, you know. Okay. Breonna Taylor. But yeah, you know, I like to use my voice to have fun and to, for a cause, you know, it's not just, it's not just for me. Charlie is a vibe. I don't care. I don't care. You know, God like me. You gonna like Charlie? Okay. Is is <laughs> don't be Charlie. Like you. It's no way you can't like that. It's fun. You know what I'm saying? It's right. fun. It's a vibe. It makes you want to dance. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm I'm happy about Charlie. That's my baby. Okay. But don't be Charlie. <laughs> so before we get up out of here, one more time, give them your handles, your socials or whatever, so they can tap in. No. No? Don't be Charlie. 